what's up you guys and welcome back to another episode and tuning in to my youtube channel i am melinda j and this is going to be a podcast edition of the trilogy documentary of yay and the name of it is genius and it is being shown on the streaming platform of netflix um it is directed by Cootie Simmons as well as uh, Chaiki and um the narration um Cootie Mr. Cootie Simmons is doing a narration majority of the video as far as like um documenting uh Kanye's journey to stardom and the position that he is in now so let's go ahead um because I'm gonna go deep deep down into this uh series and uh give you all my little two cents of what i think about it and what could we learn about this particular documentary because um i'm pretty sure everybody is on their little soul journey their uh creative journey or just a whole life journey themselves on finding what they want to do and finding themselves and uh living the life that their true hearts to whatever your hearts desire okay so yes part one is the vision and um the key statement which is the very first statement that mr cootie had narrated in the beginning of this series is every story begins with a vision please let that sink in every story begins with a vision okay and uh kanye had broke his name down as far as like the meaning behind his name and it's an ethiopian french name meaning the only one and of course people used to think his name was misspelled for some odd reason but hey that's just how the game goes whenever people are introduced um, unique names into the game they just assume um, names are being spelled this way but it's spelled a whole nother way all right so Kanye he grew up in humble beginnings in Chicago the south side of Chicago if I'm not mistaken uh, his mother was an English teacher and his dad was a Christian marriage counselor of course his mother taught the dictation of the english language and his father being the christian marriage counselor had taught him or gave him some pointers about um um blacks and their upbringings and their relationships amongst each other when it comes to the family dynamic so to speak okay and part one is basically a a um it's documented by con is documenting Kanye's journey from being a platinum producer because at this time he was a very uh very well established producer from the south side of Chicago producing beats to the rappers uh that he to all the rappers within the Chicago realm as well as um producing beats for uh, artists is from the Rockefeller um, label and a lot of record labels at the time wanted to sign him however a part a part a particular label was holding him back <laughs> um, slash stalemating him in regards to him wanting to be a rapper they wanted to keep him in this producer box to uh because he was the top producer so to speak when it comes to producing those unique beats and choosing the right people or selecting the right artists that will vibe to that beat so they can get the song that they uh, want to be on the top of the charts and you know get their name out there get noticed for fame fortune all sorts of things um so during that time in the early, in the late um uh 1990s 
in the early 2000s, really from the early 2000s on down, the only way you was able to get noticed was, or heard was you need a record deal. And because nowadays you can, you can basically make it without a record deal. You go, you could be an independent artist and all you have, mainly the main portion besides your artistry and the music, main portion comes from promotion and doing it right as far as like streaming platforms, SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, Apple um, Music, um, all sorts of things, Google Play. You know, that that is the bread and butter besides your um, music is marketing, okay? Getting yourself out there. And then plus, at the time, there was A&R artists, um, A&R and artist developers. I'm not sure nowadays they still have artist development because uh, <laughs> then you know, it, you, there was a variety of people coming out. And they they had an um, artist developer helping them create their image that they want to showcase to the world. But nowadays, it's just like, mm, okay, it's little similarities along the line. Okay? So, um, yeah, um, at, during that time, Jay-Z, DMX, Tupac, Biggie, those were the heavy hitters um, at the time. And the record labels, majority, all of them, was looking for the next Jay-Z, the next DMX, the next uh, Tupac, the next Biggie, and, and the list goes on. But, however, when you are a true artist, you don't want to be like somebody else because that's when the comparison game comes up. And you don't want to be com continually being compared to people every single time, okay? That gets annoying and it's almost like you're in the shadow of somebody else whenever your your image is created based off somebody else's um, blueprint, quote-unquote, so to speak. So, um... And also, another way to get noticed was getting a feature on the You Heard It Here First MTV show. So that was another avenue. If you haven't had a record deal yet, which that was what Kanye was going through at the time. He didn't have a record, label, uh, a record deal yet. So whenever he started continually... Uh, putting himself out there, doing um, gigs, as far as like getting up on the stage, even if it's at a comedy show or um, uh, self-promoting, talking to people and producing beats for other people. Of course, you know the you hear here you heard it here first show. That was another heavy hitter show that you can appear on and get noticed as well okay i had to take a sip of water y'all <laughs> okay so back in the early the early 90s and the 2000s it was hard for chicago artists to get noticed because one there was no record label at the time in chicago it was just WCGI, the top radio station um, in the land, in the Chicago area, when it comes to the artists coming on there and showcasing what they have and what projects that they're going to do or is coming up at the time. Um, it, the, record, the main record labels, they were either in New York, um, in the East Coast, or on the West Coast with Death Row and the Down South. Um, when it comes to so so death and um and oh yeah in the New York area there was Bad Boy and so uh yeah so there was Rockefeller and there was Bad Boy uh in those in those nineties and early two thousands round so I was very shocked that there wasn't no major labels in the Chicago area because way back before then there. 
a lot of artists did travel to Chicago um, to perform and get their name out there as well. So that was very shocking to me that Chicago uh, was left out uh, when it comes to getting their the artists out there and not having a record label. Like, what the world? <laughs> That's a heavy hitter market if it ain't none there by now. But luckily, uh, the artists had WGCI as well as Channel Zero uh, when it comes to putting their name out there. Now, Channel Zero, that was on the TV Guide channel. For all, all the people out there that know about the TV Guide channel, it was yellow. <laughs> the, the colors were yellow and red. And, uh, of course... Um, this was before the start of what there is now, streaming platforms, cable network, the TV guide. That's where you, uh, <laughs> the, t the, the channels will go in slow motion like every two seconds. And then you would just hope that you could come across the channel before it disappeared off the screen. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that, uh, whew. good time good times <laughs> but um also the second reason everyone was always so focused on the east coast versus west coast um deal back in the day when it came to bad boys and death row so it chicago yes the chicago artists they were definitely left out of the piece of the puzzle when it comes to like a, getting a variety of uh artists Okay, but however, sometimes you got to break those barriers down so everybody can eat, and that's what Kanye did. He that is one thing about Kanye. Kanye was straight up hustling. Okay, um, when whenever it was the time for him to get a record deal, in the meantime, he was still producing beats for uh everybody because that was another stream of income. So. <clears throat> Uh, key st on to key statement number two. Key statement number two that I have recognized and make note of was when one of the artists, um, his name was Memphis, and he was one of the Rockefeller artists at the time, and he said, when a ninja, um, he didn't say ninja, but you get my drift when I say ninja. When a ninja becomes great, people begin to hate. And that's like a new levels, new devils type of deal because at that, come on now, as you get up in the ladder, you gonna start feeling the hate from people. And I would tell people all the time because I had to get the realization myself that um, everybody's not gonna like you for one thing. And secondly, if people are not talking about you, then you must... <laughs> You, you must not be doing nothing right. So if people are talking about you, you must be doing something right. Uh, especially if you um doing what you love or doing what you're supposed to be doing. Now, if somebody is talking about, about you and you doing some shady stuff, then okay, rightfully so, that needs to be squashed immediately. But as far as like doing something that you love and you starting to excel on the ladder because you put in that work, to get to that point, then yes, people going to start to hate. Um, so, again, Kanye was not taking no for an answer. I do admire that about Kanye. He's not going to take, whenever he say, hears the word no, um, when it comes to business, uh, business sense, he's going to find another avenue to try to get to where he needs to go on the ladder. Okay? So, of course... With hearing the no's, uh, dealing with the New York rejection of record labels just dropping out, you know, I wouldn't say from left to right, but uh, record labels not following through on signing him up for the deal at the time. Um, and then for him to come back to Chi Town with the embarrassment of. So with one of his close colleagues, um, it really 
struck a nerve with him. And, and of course, it kind of humbled himself a little bit because um, when, of course, whenever you do start going up on the ladder, a lot of a lot of people, they're going to say, you know, remember me whenever you, you hear it. Remember me whenever you get famous, okay? Um, because, you know, I contribute to what you are becoming now, so to speak. And um, however, instead of going out on a rampage and, um, of course, bringing out the blazing or whatever, they just, one, Kanye just simply went up to the radio station and stated his piece. And then two, uh, him and the person that they had the disagreement with, they had a simple conversation and they cleared it up, squashed it, all sorts of things. And that's what a lot of people don't do nowadays. Um, they, when it comes to either getting embarrassed or uh, going through rejection and stuff like that, and so forth, um, is either is either getting blasted on social media, or in the case, uh, something violent going to happen, or has happened, and it's. It's like, dang, whatever, what happened to having a simple conversation? Because um, at least nobody won't get hurt. And also, um, to some capacity, you will get hurt as far as like your heart getting broken or your ego and pride is going to get broken. But at least you still live in another day. So it's just like pick and choose your battles. And at the same time, if um, see if it's worthwhile to like, squash over it and move on with your life all right so that's what i got from the second key statement okay on to the third key statement this one's from miss donda herself may her soul rest in peace um one of the key statements that i got from her was um a giant looks at at the mirror and sees nothing just the, however with just the right amount of confidence and <laughs> you can be down to earth so she was referring that to kanye in regards to like his confidence um she was stating you know he has just have the right amount of confidence and the right amount of um of hustle energy you know don't be so arrogant to where you don't see the bigger picture in the end you know keep grass in other words when it comes to this statement when a giant looks in the mirror and sees nothing um however with just the right amount of confidence you can be down to earth um what she really meant was continue to ground yourself as well as um you can still have the confidence and the belief that you're gonna get where you need to go but don't let it get past you to where you get arrogant and, and disingenuous about it and which leads on to the second statement of you can stay on the ground and be in the air at the same time so even though you are grounded you can still be on cloud nine at the same time. So as you rise up to the fame ladder or rise up in the bracket um, to meet with the, uh, to be on the same level with the greats, just continue to hum stay humble, ground yourself, and you can still experience the cloud nine um, high and enjoy the fruit to enjoy the fruits of your labor at the same time. So that's what I got from those two statements when she said that. Um, another thing that was really good when, after he settled the disagreement with one of his colleagues is that um, his mom's place was a, a safe haven. And come on now, what do you go to your parents' house as a safe haven? Uh, whenever you going through stuff, I know I do. 
uh, when I, whenever I'm going through stuff, I, my parents are second in command besides the most high, uh, to, um, hash out situations and get some clarity and ground myself a little bit more and recharge. So, um, anytime he made his way back home, he, uh, in the shy town, he would always, um, visit his mom's place because that was his safe haven and he was able to recharge, reflect, and get grounded. Um, and, of course, Cootie was with him along the ride, of course, and a couple of other um, homies as well to visit his mother while they were in Chi-Town, and which um, led to Cootie to do his own self-reflection and go back to his upbringing as far as, like, his father having a video camera uh, VHS the the first time he brought it home and just exploring the new uh, the new things that are coming forth to where we are at today as far as filming and production um, mother his mother Cootie's mother was filming every birth and uh, niece of the nieces and the nephews and that's when Cootie has stated that home is where you learn how to love and um, people would always ask him the question, you know, why did you stop what you was doing um, to uh, do what you're doing now with Kanye, to pick up a camera and document and follow up behind him on his journey to stardom? Why did you stop doing what you was doing? And um, that's when he had replied saying, why would you um why would you move in faith when you move in faith all things are possible and because just by following Kanye's journey because the first time he came across with Kanye was at a BT uh I believe at a BT awards uh ceremony when um he was when Cootie was with Channel 0 at the time and he was hosting the, uh, anytime they was going to like shows or uh, whether it's comedy shows or um, uh, ciphers going on around the area. Channel One was always there documenting and um, making, bringing, shedding light to all the Chicago artists out there that needed that platform to put themselves out there like hey i'm me this is me this is what i'm doing uh this is uh how i rap this is how i spit you know all that to the nine because back in nine uh because what cootie did before he noticed the unique qualities and how unique kanye was that separated himself from the others that's what made him do what he is doing now. So flashback back up into 1998, Cootie was doing stand-up comedy on the South Side of Chicago. And that's when Danny, um, that was a young filmmaker at the time, had approached Cootie about uh, hosting a show called uh, Channel Zero on TV Guide Channel, which I had referred to before. And along with Chris One, um, they was going around the Chicago area and they were the visual platform for the artists to appear and showcase their talents. Meanwhile, WGCI, they were like the audio version of audio platform for the Chicago artists to put their name out there in their music as well. And, of course, Channel Zero was the only platform documenting, uh, visually documenting the uh, Chicago's finest when it comes to the rap game. Um, however, um, whenever he came across Kanye, that's when he saw something a little bit more in Kanye to be like, hmm, I need to put the camera on him and document the journey. And like I, like he said, 
when you move in faith, all things are possible. So he dropped everything that he was doing. He he put the comedy the in the back burner and took a chance with Kanye. And uh put basically he put all his eggs in the basket and uh put the camera on Kanye because Kanye did want to document his journey um to stardom because uh I have to say with this first part of the documentary and it's going to go through with the second and the third part, which the second part is already out now, but it shows you the power of manifestation. Um, because he had, because Kanye had also mentioned that each time he was going to the bus stop, he was saying his Grammy speech. And I mean, words are power, powerful and words are also part of the manifestation process um not only with the words but also the thoughts in your subconscious can also steer your um you know thoughts can become things and also words are powerful enough to make it happen however whenever it comes to the power of manifestation even though you're thinking it and you're speaking it, you also have to put in the action in order for that um, that aspect to come true. So, whoo, the first part. <laughs> I don't, like I said, I was already amazed at the first part because, um, like, he showed the ups, the downs, the beginnings, the ends uh you name it he it was all on there and 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 it and it shows you the importance of documenting whether it's by um video or by writing in your journal it shows you whenever you document your journey or whichever path of journey it is whether it's spiritual um spiritual or just life in general and you come back to it years later is a mini time capsule and it just it humbles you because you see where you at now and then you go back and look at it and you see how far you come with all the trials the tribulations the rejections the uh, connections the networking and expressing yourself and and hard and doing uh hard work putting in that work in order to make your dreams happen like it's amazing and to be able to look at this documentary in a whole nother lens um separating the art from the artist and looking at it in the perspective of what can you learn from this particular documentary it says a lot it really does and if you don't take nothing from this documentary i don't know what else to tell you because um what i took from this first part of the documentary so far is that uh anything is possible and as cootie stated in the first statement every story begins with a vision if you have a vision you need to put it into action. If you want to make it happen, you put it you put in work to make that happen. You say what you need to say, you set that intention and uh for the universe and you let that and when uh whenever you set that intention, you let it go and you go to work so the universe can work, um, go ahead and work with you. And I promise you, things will when you look back at what, where you started and where you at now it is like it's like amazing it it really humbles you to where you are sincerely and truly grateful for where how far you have came um because uh in the circumstances that we are at now is like we're moving in an individualistic society when really we are better together so uh, with that being said, this is all that I have for the first portion. Stay tuned for the second portion because I'm going to be... <laughs>
<laughs> I'm going to be doing that like right now after I stop this recording. So uh, comment down below in the comment section on what you have learned so far from part one of this trilogy documentary of Yay uh, when it comes to the genius in him. And also comment down below where you from say hey uh, <laughs> i give shouts out on this channel too shouts out to uh miss shakinya for subscribing to this youtube channel thank you so much and also shout out to miss ella earl if i'm not mistaken i post um her little comment on this video as well thank you for commenting and uh leaving a review from me reviewing from the uh, Cheer Netflix documentary that I had uh, reviewed. So if you haven't checked that one out, go ahead and check it out. And um, yes, like, share. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you love what I am doing as far as like taking a deep analysis of these uh, shows and what what can we learn from these shows as well. All right, that is all that I have for you guys. <laughs> Be sure to uh, know thyself, love thyself, soothe thyself so you can heal thyself. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.